Hey there, welcome back and thanks for joining me. All my supplies and equipment are down in the description box, so check that out. And if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. If you want to be notified when the new videos come out, hit that notification bell. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. YouTube does look at that. And questions, comments are welcome. Okay. <sighs> I'm going to do something. And I've done this flower before, but I haven't used diluted ink for the petals. I've always used clear ink. So I want to try it. I want to play. So I'm going to put down a little bit of cranberry. We'll get it dry. Now I'm going to use my airbrush for the next, and what I'm going to do is, this is, sorry, I didn't write it down, butterscotch, and uh, I'm just going to drop it in there, and I'm going to do my petals. The first few are not going to matter, they're just your underneath petals, so it's going to take... It, it, yeah, don't get torpid about them. I know I do want to have that a little more concentrated. Where is my butterscotch? Uh, yeah, I want it a little more. I put four drops in, but I want it stronger. Now, I am going to get, because look at the crazy it did right there. If it starts doing something nuts, you can, while it's still wet, adjust that as you keep blowing. So, I'm going to keep this handy in case I need it. I do have a video where I make these petals and I go in and really, I hopefully, but I really tried to explain how you've got to keep this brush in line with where you're at. So you start making a turn here, you need to make your brush come around and stay behind the direction you're wanting to go. It's a little tricky, but once you get it, you've got it.
And at this point, you start looking and seeing where you need to even things up. Because you've kind of got your base in now. This is when you really start doing the thinking. I am actually pretty happy with that. This one's a little dark compared. I might send one right through here. There. I think that did it. Yeah, I kind of like this. It's not as big as I thought I'd get. I thought it was going to get a little bit bigger, but... I cut, mm, nope, 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 I'm not, I'm not. Sometimes I like to put little short ones right here. I am not messing with this because I am liking the colors. And I like this part. I'm going to put the flower up here so that's going to have another layer of color. So that's, that's going to be cool. All right, let's see. I'll put black. This is where I need to decide. I can kind of see, I don't know if you can see, but this is the circle that the cranberry was originally on, and it's kind of formed a little bit. I don't want to go this deep, so I may come up here, but that's just something you're going to see. Um, if you're unsure of the shape you want, cut some dark paper out in different shapes and put them on and see which ones you're liking. I don't go to straight across and I don't dip down. Because I want it to kind of be uneven a little bit. I think it's a little, while this is not a believable flower, I want it to have the aspects of a believable flower. keep going to making it more cone shaped <laughs> so apparently that's what I'm wanting okay now I will fix something in a little bit um, or I may do it now I'm gonna take this see these how these this lines going up it makes it look like it's coming from here it really needs to angle down so I'm just gonna put a little indication of that right there and over here the same this is where I see a lot of people put the center of the flower right here and it, you're like where are the leaves or the petals coming out of so you kind of want to indicate that I think that's the, the thing I see the most, and I did it too, until I started thinking about it one day. Now, I'm going to take this Sharpie. It's a very, very fine-tipped Sharpie, and I've got those in my description in the Amazon store, uh, so you can see what kinds they are, what they're called, but I'm just kind of indicating a little bit and this is like almost out so it's perfect because it's not even doing a strong line but it just gives a little bit of visual um, what's my word correctness you know when something's not even bugs you you don't know really why so this just gives a little bit of indication Like that, just just ever so slightly. And again, it's barely doing anything because it's almost out. Okay, that's that's good. I'm, I'm liking it. So can you kind of see the difference? It looks like it's actually coming from the center there. Um, 
Posca pen or what do I want to do? I think, and I used to do this and I've kind of quit and I look back on something and it's like, I want to do that again, I guess. Uh, take a dotting tool and I got to dip it a little bit in this mixture here that I've got and see what it does. Seeing as this is an alcohol marker, it should do about the same. I'm not really seeing it move. And in all reality, I'm gonna put glitter on this. But I kind of wanted something under there, and I kind of I like that. those little scratchy marks in there okay I don't think that's doing what I want um, so I am gonna get it a little bit with the Posca nothing's working today There we go. Okay, just had to get it going. Oh well, anyway, I had showed you some couple things you could do. You can always mix it up and play with it a little bit. Okay, and something else I want to do. I love putting the dots. I will barely touch because I don't want them real strong. Just a little bit like that. Maybe a couple around here. Now, something I do like to do here is before this gets totally dry, I put some stick marks in there. Even though I'm putting glitter on it, these will show up. I got a green and a brown. Then I'm going to do the stems in. I like the stem to start up. I don't want it to start at the bottom of this petal. So I kind of find a spot like this. And then I'm going to do the brown over it just a little bit. Now remember when you're working with markers, they work on top of each other. So even though the brown's darker than my green, I can do that over it and I still have some of that green coming through. All right, now, I don't believe I've ever splattered one of these flowers. Until now. I'm gonna do it now. Okay. 
Those will do. Uh, that may be a little, I'm, I can mix it. Yeah, that's too orange. But I'm gonna mix this with some of this yellow. Uh, remember the splatters can be a little brighter. That one's way brighter. I'm having a little trouble here. That's more of it. Okay, there's that color. Okay, there's that color. And let's see this. Too red, I tell you that. And I don't know which one I'm going to use. I may just end up using the yellow because I don't want it to scream. But I do want some of the green down here. You know what? I think that's what I'll do. I just won't use the red. side Put some white in here I'm at the end of my white so it's I'm catching a lot of air okay that's better I think yeah that's a little interesting just because there's a lot of drops I'm going with it Glitter. This is the Sticklers from Tin Holtz. Love it, love it, love it. Um, I just put it on here. And then I'll take something and start just moving it around. So you can still see through it. It's got clear glue to it, but it's got a lot of glitter. It's really packed full of glitter so that you have a good show of glitter, but not so much that you've taken over your flower. And I like to go down and hit just a couple through here. Fancies it up. Just a little. All right, that is it. That is it. Let me bring it in and let you look. See how that glitter does? Isn't that pretty cool? All right, y'all go have fun, happy painting, and God bless.